I've got a, well, first of all, I should say hello, friends. And uh, as you can see, we're out in my garden and um, the sun is shining, which is why I may be frowning. Sorry about that. I'm not a miserable git, but that's the reason, okay? It's the sun. Um, but what I want to do here, this tree, the Alcova serrata, um, was made many, many years ago from a tiny little matchstick-sized cutting um, <clears throat> and planted out in a field to thicken up. Anyway, it's got some quite interesting roots over here and here, but not a lot around this side or indeed around here. So what I've done is I've marked some places where I'm going to drill holes to see if I can encourage some roots to develop. And the technique that I'll be using is one that I gleaned from Deborah Koroshov's book uh, many, 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 many years ago. Deborah Koroshov was from Australia and um, published a very, very fine book on bonsai with lots of techniques, lots of drawings. I strongly recommend it if you can still get it. I don't know whether it's in print anymore. Anyway, <clears throat> I'm going to um, make a start in a moment, but before we can do any of that, <coughs> excuse me, I've got to mix up the um, the sphagnum moss with some compost and also some forest bark. I have some sphagnum moss here, which I have chopped up okay to make it into more manageable lengths. I've got some regular garden compost here, okay, and some forest bark. Water. Now, what I need to do in the first instance is make up a cocktail of some various chemicals that facilitate root development. So we'll put a few drops, a few drops of Super Thrive in the water. Okay. And this stuff here, I can't remember the name, um, but it's a very, very potent thing. So just a drop or two of that. What does it do? You can't remember the name, it's potent, but what actually does it do? It was something that was given to me in America, God knows how many years ago. Um, and there's another little compound here, which <clears throat> was recommended to me by a friend. It's called Supervit. So we'll just put a few drops of it in as well. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Okay. That'll do for that. Now, I'm just going to stir that around. Okay. And we're going to now get some of the sphagnum moss. All right. We're going to get some of the forest bark. And some of the that'll do. All very accurately measured amounts, okay? in my usual empirical way. Incidentally, when you're doing this, as you can see, it does make sense to, to wear gloves. My cameraman has just said that I have to explain what I mean by empirical way. What it means is I'm not using any specific quantities. I'm just doing it by feel and touch and um, experience. I need a bit more sphagnum in there. Lovely, lovely jubbly. Okay, make sure it's all soaking wet, well distributed. Okay, now I'm just going to leave that for a moment and go back. We're going to go back to the tree and I shall drill the holes. Okay, but before I do that, I have a little syringe here and I've got this rooting hormone gel. So I'll just put that in there and suck some up. A bit more. All right. So you can see I've got some of my gel in there. Now we're going to return 
back to the the tree and I'm going to drill the holes. The choice of drill bit is quite tiny. It's about the same thickness as a matchstick. You'll see why in a moment. So I'm just going to tighten this up so it doesn't move. <clears throat> and I'm going to go in where I've marked it. Come on. Whoa. Okay, now we'll turn around to the other side. And I've got a whole load of holes here as well. I'll start on this side. These will, I'll fill these holes in a moment with a syringe and put some of the rooting hormone in there. Right, put this away. <clears throat> Now, the next thing is to get a little bit of this in there, tiny bit in there, a little bit in there. This rooting hormone is to encourage the roots to grow, hopefully, in these positions. All right, we'll turn it round so the holes are made on the other side. I think there's one here somewhere. Where is it? There. Another one here. Another one there. Which I'm just going to snap. And I'll plug these holes. Three on that side, and a few on this side. This one here. Another one there. <clears throat> Another one there. Another one here somewhere. <clears throat> I've just said right the matchsticks will hold some of the rooting hormone and shove it down the hole okay where's, 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 where's that other hole I've lost it oh there it is so that's that <clears throat> now I'm going to just get my little paintbrush get my rooting hormone again <clears throat> and this time I'm just going to paint some all around and on here I don't want that lot to dry out. But just to show that the system does work, if you'd just like to follow me, Mr. Cameraman, around here, <clears throat> take a look here. This was all one lopsided, and I drilled a series of holes here ooh, some time back, and you can see how successful it was in encouraging roots to develop using the technique I've just shown you with the matchsticks. Right, the next thing I've got to do now is to <clears throat> get my bit of
this thing here okay I'm gonna to have to put this around which I've already prepared so that it'll go in nicely okay something like that right and I'll get this and we'll put that here and we'll hopefully do that okay and now make sure that is scented I've got a few little things that I've made just to pin it down so I've made a few little staple like bits of my wire just to hold this down you know preparation is very important it's so easy to forget your thing get in there All right Oh look, there's a little seedling maple here. I had them growing all over the garden because of the big trees. Incidentally, all of the trees that you see in the garden here, they were all grown from seed, oh, about 30, 35 years ago. Oh, that was not going in very well. It's because there's seed, hey. right. Down there. This, this one has come down here, yeah, just down there. Whoa, get in there. This tree was repotted earlier this year. In, almost there, guys. Almost there. Another one in here. Right. So that'll do. Now what I've got to do is get my bucket of prepared sphagnum, which I'm going to put over here. This all has to stay for Oh, a good season, at least, if not longer. But I won't be in any hurry, so it might be some time before you'll get to see the results, if I'm still alive. But at least you've seen on the other tree how it works and what one can expect. Well, that basically is it. What I want to do now, I'll just put the rest of this in. Lovely, lovely jubbly. Oh. A lot of people oh, would use just 100% sphagnum moss. But I like to use a little bit of the compost and the forest bark as well. Don't ask me why. I just do. Right. So now I'm just going to wrap that up, if it will take, with a little bit of cling film. some scissors over there somewhere. I'll just go and get those. <clears throat> right. 
And that basically is it, okay? What is important is that this area with the sphagnum moss isn't allowed to dry out completely or, or at all. You know, always keep it on the damp side. So it does require, you know, a lot of um, diligent looking after. Well, <clears throat> as you can see, no big deal. Dead easy, really. Um, it's been fun doing. It is important, though, that you have everything prepared beforehand. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to check whether there's anything I've missed out. Got my list, all the different things. <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. I might <clears throat> get a little circle of um, plastic or something, cut a slot, and just put it in there. I'll do that later. Okay, because I wasn't sure. On the other hand, this is quite good. Right, let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that this works. So you can see what a lovely day it is today. And um, we're in the garden. And uh, as I've said so many times to you, you want to be my best friend? Remember to like, subscribe, and share. Especially share. That's so important. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I should have mentioned earlier that this tree, Zelkova, I've styled, or I'm styling, um, as an informal upright, which is quite unusual because Zelkovas are invariably grown in the broom style, as you can see from the big chappie over here. Okay. The other thing that I want to mention is that the reason why I put this cling film around the mesh is to <clears throat> reduce the evaporation of the moisture that we put on the sphagnum, etc., around there. And I will, I've run out of sphagnum at the moment, but I will later cover the whole of the surface area with some sphagnum moss, again, to maintain the dampness. And, um, yeah, fingers crossed. I just hope it all works.